I had to go to help her to read out the menus that were listed that she was supposed to be cooking from because she did not know how to read or write. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Literacy Journeys with Linda. I have a very special guest today. Mommy! <laughs> it's my very own mother. She's nervous about this, so bear with us. Coming to this interview, kicking and screaming, mm -hmm. but you've got to hear her voice because what we're going to be talking about is her mother, my grandmother, who couldn't read, write, add or subtract. So I want you to hear about the literacy journey of my grandmother. You ready for this, mommy? Mm -hmm. I'd like to introduce you to my mother, Miss Helen Elizabeth Edmonds Skates. We are here in her lovely home in Chicago, Illinois, where I was raised, but she was born in Memphis. And I want you to hear about my grandmother who was a cook who couldn't read. Hi, mom. Tell everybody hello. Hello, everyone. Who is this? This is my mama and my brother. Okay. And what's her name and everything? My mother, Roberta William Morris. Mm -hmm. And my brother, Adolph Bernard Morris. Mm -hmm. And you're the big sister. And I am Helen Elizabeth Ed Morris Edmund Skate. Very good. That's my complete name. It is. Now, and I'm going to have to tell the audience how old you are because your birthday's tomorrow and you are going to be 87 years old, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I feel that age is nothing but a number. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to thank you for talking with me today because this is a subject that's very close to my heart and it wasn't until I was an adult that I found out that your mother could not read, write, add, or subtract. But even with that, she was a very successful cook and I want you to tell me about how she was able to cope being a person that was illiterate and how you and your younger brother helped her. And would you start by telling me a little bit about, I know you said you don't remember a lot of details, but could you tell me a little bit about her early life, like where she was born and how she ended up in Chicago? What do you remember about her childhood? I remember that my <coughs> mother was born in- Danville, Virginia. Virginia. Right. And she had a, a brother, her, she was the, Oh, she was, my brother was the oldest. His name was Wash William. And mm -hmm. she had three sisters. I've forgotten the three names. The one was Laura. La yeah, Laura was one of the names. But she was the eldest of the three sisters. Mm -hmm. The brother was in charge of all, all of them. Mm -hmm. I don't know the memory of what happened before, mm -hmm. uh, but I, all I remember is that I, my, I was told by my, my, um, my mother's brother mm -hmm. that they were moved from Virginia to, and uh, he was in charge of them. Because they didn't have parents? You don't know what happened to their parents. I understand. And um, anyway, he was in charge. He took the girl, which one was my mother, to different places. Mm. To, to stay. Oh no, so they and were separated. They were set he separated them. Ah. And my mother was sent to a family of white white family. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where my sisters her sisters were, were sent. Mm -hmm. But she, the family, the white family that she lived with did not give her any cat type of education. That's what he said. Somehow they ended up in West Virginia, huh? Uh, and I remember him telling me, telling that story. But the point is, as a young girl, she was sent to live with this white family. Yeah. And they didn't give her any education. Right. To the point where she couldn't write her name. No. She could not add or subtract anything, even into adulthood. Right. Let's fast forward to now she's in Chicago. She's married to 
your father, whom I never met, you all are living in Ida B. Wells. Yes. Very famous yeah. housing project in Chicago. Yes. And now what do you remember about your life with her mm -hmm. in Ida B. Wells? Oh, it was you wonderful. I, I, I liked it. I liked my life in Ida B. Wells. I had lots of friends, lots of neighbors. She, she my mother was, was well known to the neighborhood. And there were she, you said she was well known to the neighbor neighborhood? To the to our 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 oh. neighbors. What yes. was she what was she famous for? What was she? fishing. <laughs> she <laughs> yes. was the fisher lady in the, in the neighborhood. She went fish. She loved going fishing. Mm -hmm. She would also love po policing the children in the in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. watching them <laughs> and giving them orders of keeping things nice and neat and clean and being See, nice. See, that was great back then. You know how they say it takes a village yes. to raise a child. Yes, she. They really put that into effect back then. Everybody was looking out. Yeah, she, she was the, the police mama <laughs> <laughs> of, the, of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And what was it like for you and your brother inside the home oh, with her? It was very nice. She was always away every day working. She was at work. And um, my father had a stroke when I was four years old, which put him into the hospital. The high, he was put into the hospital, and um, so he never had was able to get come back home. Mm. He never came back to live with you all. No, mm. except for she tried to to uh, have him to come back, but it didn't work out. So he had to go be in the hospital. He was very disorientated uh, and the meat and dementia and everything. Mm. So that's why you say your mom was basically raising you and your brother by, your, by herself? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I always appreciate, I always knew that. I don't know how I knew it. I just always knew and appreciated that. Mm -hmm. She was, she was being a good mother mm -hmm. to us. Yeah. And so I tried to be a good daughter to her. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. in turn, you were a good mother to me and my siblings. <laughs> I tried. And I tried. it goes on and on. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate you. So now you said your mother raised you work, going to work. What kind of work did she do? She was a magnificent cook. That's, that was her job. She worked in the basement part of County Hospital for years with recipes that she did and because she 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 I guess until I got there from school to help her she did her own cooking but I had to go to help her to read out the menu that were listed that she was supposed to be cooking from because she did not know how to read or write. Mom, did she ever express that out of her mouth? Did you ever hear her say, I can't read, I can't write, I can't add or subtract? Did she, did she ever express that? No, never. You just she, knew? Yes, yeah, she was just, uh, uh, had the newspaper at, when we lived at there, uh, um, not at, not to be well, she was, had the newspaper and reading it. I mean, you know, like she was reading it. Mm -hmm. like she was reading the newspaper and my brother and I were in the room there with her and we looked at each other. I don't know how we knew she couldn't read or write. And we just smiled at each other. Let's teach her to you write. Also, so Let's what? teach her to write her name okay. and to do some math. And so she, she Cooperated with us. Did you all? How did you all do that? Could she? In, could she write, Roberta? She, she learned to. You all taught. Uh -huh. We taught her to write her Roberta name. Roberta Morris. Morris. Mm. And then we taught her the numbers, 
wrote down the numbers and everything from one to ten or and the uh, alphabet A, A, you mm -hmm. know, for her to remember and all. But as far as you know, you never heard her say, I wish I could read and write or read this newspaper. She never said anything. No, she never said anything. So let's go back to, you're saying after school, you would go down to her job and help her measure out, like re read the recipes? Read the recipe and give her, and, and, and give her, I mean, show her the measurements of what the recipe said. Just help her with her cooking down the line. It, the recipes were on a, I remember them being on a line, a string, mm. and she went, those go do this one push, push that over and go to the next one push that over I don't know if she was cooking the whole meal or getting it prepared to be cooked you don't remember that uh -huh. I don't remember what the, what the details were of that but, do you, but you I do? helped her mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. with the details wow that, that was a good daughter and that was probably you said maybe in high school you're, you're not yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah wow and then she, I don't know how she, how this happened, but she was, the last job was at, in the downtown area. The department store. The department store of, um. Bond would tell her, right? Yes. Which Bond. no longer. <laughs> no longer, there's no longer there. But she was top chef in the, in the, Bond would tell her, in the, um, Buying with tellers. Top chef. That is amazing. That's and amazing how she was able to right. exceed like that. Right. Without even being able to read the recipes. And I know you said she had some specialties that people used to line up. Oh, her special. She had a, a specialty. Oh, okay. And her specialty was sweet potato pie. It was delicious. There were lines. I'll put and that I, recipe in the description box, a recipe. I tried to get there because I, uh, uh, to, to, to get in line, I did, I made it there one day when I was working. I was working downtown at that, at that time. Mm -hmm. And one time I made it there. And I, you know, just, you know how people talk in the line. Mm -hmm. And said, ooh, I'm, I'm waiting in line. And it was a long land too, waiting in land to eat that sweet potato pie. <laughs> Missing my mama's pie. Yay, <laughs> that's great. Now, I know what we have here. You've shown everybody the picture of you, I mean, of your mother and your baby brother. Yes. But these are very interesting. Whoa kind of heavy. Mm -hmm. This is one of those cookbooks, one mm -hmm. of her cookbooks. Yeah. Very old, <laughs> from the 1940s, <laughs> with all these recipes in it. Yeah. These belong to your mother. Hey, yeah. they're weights. Mm -hmm. But yeah. she couldn't read these. She could not read these cookbooks with all these intricate details. That's stuffed where I shrimp. Helped. Oh, desserts, and so I was there to help her mm -hmm. understand these, like mm -hmm. beef stroganoff. I think you said she would make that beef stroganoff. You know, yeah, I don't spaghetti know. Spaghetti and meatballs. Yeah, and just so many and, things in here. Yeah. Um, short rib. But that's that's remarkable. Delicious. The, the now here's what I remember. Uh, when I was a child, when she would come over to visit us, we called her mama. She's coming up the stairs, and we would hug her, and she would bring uh, some cookies, Salerno cookies, I don't know, and some double mint gum, these two <laughs> iconic Chicago companies. <laughs> and then she, you and her, would go into the sun parlor, and I was a little girl, I remember peeking through the glass door looking at you all, I didn't want to go in there, and you know why? Because right at her feet was that can, that snuff can, yeah. and she had yeah. that. Uh, 
that spit that uh, tobacco, chewing tobacco. Yeah, chewing tobacco. But I do remember she had one big arm and one skinny arm. But here, but here's what made an impression on me. And I don't know why you say you don't remember this, but you would be reading to her. I think you were reading letters from your brother who was in the Navy. Yeah, I may have. You don't, I you don't, don't distinctly remember. Any but detail. I distinctly remember thinking, why is my mother reading to her mother? I mean, mm -hmm. she, you read to us as kids. But I didn't find out till years later. I think I was an adult when you told me that she could not read or write. And I loved reading so much. I made a vow to myself at that time that I was gonna teach people how to read. And so that's really, when I found that out, that really kind of solidified my passion for literacy and wanting to get people involved in literary, mm -hmm. literacy. Did you know that according to the National Literacy Association, there are 781 million people around the world who are either illiterate, meaning they can't read or write, or they're functionally illiterate, which means they have very low literacy ability. Also, according to the National Center for Educational Statistics, 21% of adults in the United States fall into the category of being illiterate or functionally illiterate. That's 43 million people living among us. And another sad statistic is that our fourth graders, nearly two thirds of them are going into fourth grade not being able to read on grade level. And two thirds of our high school graduates are still reading below grade level. Another sad fact is that 70% of our state prison inmates, according to the Justice Department, are either functionally illiterate or they haven't graduated from high school. So what does this all mean? Is that there, there are risks involved with being illiterate. Some of the risks are health risk, poverty, intergenerational poverty, employment, crime. And if you're interested in working with this issue like I am I'm going to put some resources in the description box where you can get in touch with organizations that provide tutoring for adults that help students with tutoring little kids there's lots that you can do to help with this effort to eradicate illiteracy among us so I want to thank you mom for everything that you did to help your mom Thank you, know, you, thank you. For and, and at least she did learn to write her name and do a little bit of addition. And I thank you and your brother for helping her because even though she never expressed it, I imagine, you know, what was she feeling when she was re pretending to read the newspaper like that? Probably in her heart, she was desiring to be able to read it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I imagine. We didn't talk about, you know, we didn't yeah, you all never discussions talk about and and or anything about that. Mm -hmm. Go on with life. Yeah. <laughs> just live Go life. on with life and mm -hmm. cope with life. Yeah, it's just, it's, we're no, no discussions as to do, uh, uh, except for man, you know, raising us up and giving us the right manners. And that's how we did. And, and but I, I remember record. one time you did say that you were grateful that she made sure you and your brother had your education. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Mom, Mommy, mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing, telling me a little bit about your mother. And before we close, is there anything else you'd like to share about your mother, about just anything else you'd like to share with the audience before we close about Miss Roberta Morris? She was just a wonderful mother, and I always appreciated her. And she raised me to do the right thing and take care of my brother. And that's what I did. Good for you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to my mom, Miss Helen Elizabeth Morris Edmonds Skates <laughs> in Chicago, Illinois. And I want to thank you for sharing the literacy journey of your mother. And ladies and gentlemen, if you like hearing these interviews, please click that subscribe button so you won't miss any of these literacy journeys with Linda.
thank you so much. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.